So the really funny part was, <laughs> you know, I'm 61 years old, and I, I, I know this is bragging, but anyway, I, just, I think it's more funny than bragging. But I swear to God, those two times I fell, fell right down on the sidewalk and bounced up like a rubber ball, and <laughs> not, not a scratch. Well, that's not entirely true. The one time I did get a tiny little bruise, but I mean, I didn't like get scratched or hurt or anything. I mean, I literally, boom, bounced right up and kept right on going. <laughs> All right, and we are back. Huge welcome to the Ultra Running Guys community. Jeremy Reynolds, Jeff Winchester of the Ultra Running Guys. And whether you are listening to the podcast, tuning in to YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. And tonight we've got a super special guest, uh, one of my favorite people on the planet, just because he's got mm -hmm. endless energy. Um, and there's lots to talk about, and we'll get into that. But the reason we've got this guy on the show tonight is because he's about to do something pretty mind blowing. I call it insane. Insane. And, and this is Ultra Runners calling it insane. Um, to set it up, this gentleman has run two marathons backwards. And not I don't, forward, not forward. Not forward. Not forward. I don't mean running the course in reverse. I mean running backwards. But what's more impressive is, and it's for a great cause, he is getting ready to run 100 miles in 100 hours backwards. <laughs> and it's all to raise $100,000 to support the Community Boys and Girls Club of Wilmington and the track of, uh, track of Optimism and Field of Dreams. And we're going to dive right into that. But without further ado, uh, Mr. Tracy McCollum, we want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, hey thank you guys for having me. I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Man, we are just so pleased. And so obviously we've got a thousand questions about running backwards and kind of everything that goes mm -hmm. along with that. Um, but I think where we really want to start tonight is help us understand kind of your connection with the Community Boys and Girls Club. Obviously it's something very important to you. And then the follow on to that is what is the track of optimism in the field of dreams? My involvement with the Community Boys and Girls Club started about 15 years ago when a, a friend who was working nearby the community boys and girls club on another project uh, for the community asked me if i would design a playground i instantly realized that i had found a new passion in my life because uh, i love kids and i and i love being creative and and uh, I, I love a challenge and uh, this was definitely a challenge. So I got involved with them and uh, a big organization called Kaboom, which uh, does a lot of playgrounds for uh, kids all, all over the country and especially in underserved communities. But they needed a lot of prep work done. So uh, being a, a designer and a landscape contractor, I had employees and I had equipment. So I went over to the club and uh, did a lot of prep work for the playground. And then as soon as the playground was installed, uh, I uh, helped build a baseball field for the Community Boys and Girls Club. And then they're like, wow, this guy really uh, likes hanging out here. So let's ask him to be on the board. <laughs> So I joined the board of directors and did that for five or six years and then took a break and, and then realized um, last year before I did the marathon at Wrightsville Beach that it was time for me to, to give back. I love giving back and somehow I just got out of the rhythm of, of that and uh, I, I felt like my life was not complete. Uh, unless I was given back because my life has been so blessed and I'm so fortunate to um, to have such a, a wonderful life and, and, and I like to be able to share that joy and that passion uh, with others especially kids. So that's great um, yeah I think the big thing and one thing that I'll say and, and we'll post the website um, but if you go back you mentioned that first marathon there is a video of you running that and a lot of it looked like support from the community boys and girls club and they were holding your hands running across the finish line it's clear that you've got a great relationship with these people 
So tell us about the track of optimism, uh, the field of dreams, what that's going to do for the community boys and girls club. Like, um, what's the vision there? Well, uh, it's a big vision <laughs> and it's one that's very achievable, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of fundraising and a lot of, uh, the community coming together to make it happen. But basically, I came up with this concept. Uh, to me, I, I love running, I love a, a, I love a track, and uh, I felt like a, a track was a really good thing to provide for the Community Boys and Girls Club because unlike a lot of sports where you have to have a lot of teams with, with other uh, people participating, sometimes large groups like in soccer or baseball or uh, football or even basketball, uh, running is something you can do on your own. And, and it's something that involves uh, the female population a lot more than baseball, football, and even basketball. Not that, uh, not that young ladies and women uh, participate in, in all of those, but running is much more diverse and and it's something you can do on your own so i thought and since i love running i thought that would be a really good thing uh to build for the community boys and girls club so as i'm thinking about this track and how i can uh design it in this space and make it um make it different than the typical track and field that has a football field or a soccer field on the uh, on the inside, I came up with this concept called the track of optimism and the field of dreams. And uh, whew, that's a there's a <laughs> there's so much to tell about that. So I'm going to try to tell the short version. Is this uh, track and field will be completely surrounded with audio and visual stimulation, promoting kids to live a healthy lifestyle and to maintain a positive mindset to uh, always have the confidence that they need to turn their dreams into reality. I always like to say, keep smiling and keep moving forward in the direction of your dreams with calm confidence and invincible determination. <clears throat> it's really cool. So, you know, the, um, the idea, obviously it you know, kind of shows a lot of your own inspiration, everything that you feel about it and everything that you've kind of invested in at the time. Um, it's a huge project. Like it sounds massive undertaking. And I know you're, you're raising funds for it and um, you've got a goal that you're currently trying to raise funds for as well right now. But do you see the development being like in multiple phases to where like, for instance, maybe you're just doing the track portion before you do the interior field. Like how do you plan to maybe phase this through or is it a, a, or is it a full project and once everything is done and then it's available? Well, it, no, that's a very good question. It will definitely be done in phases. And the first phase is uh, what I'm about to do, <laughs> which is to run 100 miles backwards in 100 hours to raise $100,000 for the Community Boys and Girls Club to build this track of optimism and field of dreams. So, or to build, I'm sorry, I should say to build phase one of the track of optimism in the field of dreams. And what that means is that that $100,000 will pay for, uh, architectural and engineered drawings, which are going to be very complex, includes a, because there'll be a lot of elevation change, massive earthwork and drainage issues that will need to be dealt with. Plus there's some auxiliary buildings that go along with that. So um, the, uh, the hundred thousand dollars will pay for all of that. Plus it'll pay for the initial preparation of the site so that uh, so that we can start doing some elevation grading and 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 get the the ground uh, Especially where the track will be so that you can actually see the space you can see ooh, You know you can start to see what's going to happen and then um, That hundred thousand dollars will also pay for a very very comprehensive business plan and some really high-tech uh, 3D images that uh, that show exactly what we're going to do because then at that point we'll still get community support I'm sure maybe even much more so when people can actually see what's happening 
But the bigger money at that point will come from uh, corporate sponsors. And I probably shouldn't mention who we're thinking about at this point, but <laughs> But we can talk we'll about We'll stop you there. How about, how about we stop you there? You don't have to mention who the corporate sponsors may be and everything. But, but when you were explaining it, I mean, like I said, the vision is huge and you've got this multi-phase approach because I figured there had to be something like that. And, um, and I think you're right. I think the $100,000 to do a lot of the site prep to get your designs and get all the things laid out that you'll need to use um, for, the, for the next follow-up phases is an imperative step. And, um, and, I, and I agree with you. I think as more people in our community begin to see that, and see some of the work that's being laid on the ground, really per se. Um, I think you'll you'll get a higher response from like your corporations and stuff. And so um, I think this is a really good first phase, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, and you are going to try to run a hundred miles backwards. And oh wait, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> I will run a hundred miles backwards. That's right. Oh, did I say if? <laughs> you, no, said you, gonna, said you said you're going to try. <laughs> Well, I mean, I have DNF one, well, so, <laughs> but you're not because you are Tracy McCullen and you're going to finish well, it. I'm not a superstar, but I'm so fortunate that I have a superstar running beside me the entire time. Well, he might be biking or walking or on his elliptical, but my dear friend and an amazing um, world renowned ultra marathoner, Charlie Engel will be with me every step of the way. And so I know that even if I'm crawling at the last, <laughs> at the last uh, of the hundred miles running backwards, that Charlie will make sure that I get across that finish line. I think that, <laughs> so there's, there's so much I want to unpack here, oh, right? <laughs> um, Charlie Engel. Oh uh, yeah, I know. You say Charlie Engel's name. And so I'm going to jump into that in a second. Um, here's what we're going to do for, for everybody listening and watching. So obviously running a hundred miles backwards just sounds insane. Um, and Tracy, we'll, we'll, we've talked about, you've done two marathons backwards already, but I want to kind of ground uh, everybody that's plugging in because we're, we have a lot of questions about it. I want people to understand though, just kind of uh, how much of an accomplished runner you are, how in tune you are with your body, um, that this isn't like, you know, some stunt um, but I, I think you've got some incredible stuff. So I'm just going to kind of fire through them here. Um, you really didn't start running until around 50 because you decided for your 50th birthday, you're going to do your first marathon since yes. then, since then in the last 11 years, you've done 22 marathons, including some of the big ones, right? That people would recognize Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, San Francisco. Uh, you've done a marathon in the Swiss Alps that is considered Woo! the most beautiful yes. in the world. Absolutely. Um, and then really, this is kind of where I get jealous, right? For to celebrate your 60th birthday, you ran 60 miles in Central Park with Charlie Engel. Charlie Engel. <laughs> if you are watching this or if you're listening and you don't know the name Charlie Engel, go Google it. The guy is an icon. Uh, Tracy is not exaggerating. Um, so that's why we're jealous, you know, because we want to <laughs> hang out with the dude. He's going to be in town. He is going to be for at least town. four days. So you may see us a lot during your effort. Um, but I think that's amazing. And, and really all that to say that like, hey, you know what you're doing. You've done a lot of this. You've done two marathons backwards. And so we've, like I said, we've kind of got a list of questions that if you don't mind, we kind of like to pepper you with. Uh, I'm just ready. Because we don't get the opportunity to talk to somebody that is doing this kind of thing very often, right? Um, Far away. So I'm going to go first. Yep, go ahead. I'm going to go first. Um, how in the world do you actually practice running backwards? Uh, it's like a lot of things in life. You just do it. You just get out you just put your shoes on and you, and you, and you just go out there and turn yourself around and, <laughs> and start running backwards. I, you know what? Okay, I have, to, I have to just throw in this one thing. When I first came up with the idea of running backwards, I swear to God, it was out of the blue and uh, most people would say it was uh, divine inspiration but whatever it was it was definitely out of the blue a year and a half ago when i decided i wanted to um to run the marathon backwards for raising money for the community boys and girls club at that point and the funny thing is is i had never ran backwards not even 100 feet backwards and i knew as i knew as i knew that I could do it. 
and um, not there again, I want to really emphasize, I'm not a superstar. I'm such an average guy. I just am so passionate about life. And when I make a decision that I'm going to do something challenging, I, I, I do it, or at least um, I, I put in every effort I can to make it happen. And so, uh, so I just literally started running. I will say that it does help to have good coordination and good balance. Uh, and I did run the first marathon without uh, the use of any mirrors to see behind me, but I did have Charlie Engel <laughs> guiding me the whole way through that first marathon. He was my eyes uh, behind me, and that was a lot of fun for me. Anyway, it was a little stressful for him, especially every time I, I got within an inch or two of, a, of one of those big traffic cones, and he'd be yelling, no, no, go that way. <laughs> well, and I so, will say, sorry to interrupt, but I will say Charlie was live that day on Facebook mm -hmm. doing a lot of stuff. Um, I did comment. He did say my name, so we're pretty much brothers at this point. Yes, he did. I remember that. I remember that, Jeremy. <laughs> um, and, and one other thing I want to touch on, and I apologize that, that I'm kind of weaving all over, but um, you, you said something I think that is, is uh, really adds so much weight to what you're doing. You have a passion for life, and it's one of the reasons I said in the beginning of this that you're one of my favorite people on the planet. You have a passion for life um, that I think that will – if everybody had it, the world would be a better place. Um, and just so everybody kind of knows, Tracy, without really knowing me, we had met once or twice, my first 100-mile run, the Umstead 100. Uh, I happened to run into Tracy a couple weeks before. I said, I'm doing this thing. He said, that's incredible. I want to be there. I want to run you across the finish line. And I think you ran approximately 30 miles that day between the two laps and some other stuff. That's right. Um, what really struck me was your passion and your love just of being on the course in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> and so I think taking that passion that I got to see firsthand into a project like this uh, helps me really understand kind of why you're going to be successful. Um, but so now to go through that, and I, I've, I've watched a lot of your videos and stuff. Talk to us about the mechanics of running backwards. Um, I, I've seen you say a couple of things. You've had your feet go numb. You try some different kind of strides or stepping things. Um, what has been the adjustment going from running forwards to running backwards? Well, the biggest adjustment is that your, your quads uh, really, um, really do a lot of screaming. <laughs> All right, I can, I can uh, see that. You know, the calves, the, the calves definitely get uh, tight. They get a good workout and you know, your legs look like you've been bicycling all day long. Um, but the, the, the calves, they can get, you know, they can, they can give you a little bit of a, a challenge, but it's mostly the quads. And it's, and it, it's, I got to this point at one, at, at one point that, uh, that I realized that the burning sensation in my quads was not actually pain. It was just a burning sensation. <laughs> so when I kind of when I kind of got to where I could say, okay, that's not pain. That's just part of the process. Then I swear to God, I think it went away. But that was probably because I just ended up running hundreds of miles backwards. I actually not sure that I mentioned it before, but I did run almost 200 miles backwards in November just last month. And uh, and fifty miles and fifty miles forward. I'll get back to where we were in just a second. But when I'm running backwards down at Wrightsville Beach, where I'm training to to actually run the 100 miles, people will see me, you know, day after day, and they'll be like, "Oh my God, I see you out here every day running backwards. Do you ever run forwards?" And I said, "Oh yeah, yeah, on Mondays and Wednesdays." <laughs> <And they're> like, <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't say it to be funny, but. It, <laughs> Anyway, so back to where we were, the mechanics. Okay, so honestly, guys, after hundreds of miles, I don't even, I, I literally did not even feel my quads and calves burning. I mean, they're getting a good workout, but it's, it's, it's not pain at all. The, the biggest thing for me now is really just to pay attention to my feet and make sure that, because you know how everything is so connected to the mind, the mind, the body, and the spirit, 
anyway, so a lot of times if you're thinking about whatever and you're a little stressed and, and you're not being in the moment and you're not relaxing, any part of your body can get rigid and then start getting cramps. And, and so that's even true with your feet. And so I, I really have to pay attention to my feet. I did uh, mention one time before about my feet going numb. And I think that was because I was running too much uh, flat footed or not totally flat footed, but kind of sliding my feet a little bit, you know, that sort of Michael Jackson, uh, moonwalk <laughs> and so uh so the the moonwalk uh it, it can be kind of fun if you you know if you're showing off or or if you're just flat out exhausted and your feet won't hardly pick up and you're just sliding them and then doing the moonwalk <laughs> but the truth is it's so much better for my feet if i if i run with in in my toes um my toes literally come forward and then my and then my my feet roll rock and roll on the ground if i can do that and, and uh, on a regular basis and it, it 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 actually it's like it feels good guys i keep telling people it's not as hard as it looks and nobody believes me <laughs> so so just for clarification um so you kind of toe stripe first and then roll down to the back to your towards your heel is that correct Yes. Yeah. And that's so, probably, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. One more question on that. When you forward run, like when you run forward, sorry, run normal. Um, when you do that, um, do you, do, uh, can you tell me about your foot strike when you run forward? Yes. Yes. And that's a very good question. And I was going to mention that. I never run on my toes when I run forward. Mm -hmm. I would love to, to, to say that I would love to do that and say that I do that because I know that's the proper way to run. But uh, I didn't, I didn't learn that rhythm when I was 20 or 30 or 40. Uh, so since I started late in life, I think, I don't know, maybe that's just an excuse, <laughs> but I never really got that rhythm of running on my toes. Well, until now that I'm running backwards. <laughs> in, in that thread. So I went and looked at, cause I'm sure one of the, the things that people are going to are, are thinking, right. Is okay. So you run backwards, you're going to run a hundred miles what is your pace? And so I went back and kind of looked at the pacing for the marathon, which the first one you looked really happy. And then I saw footage at the end, man, when you came across the finish line, you looked like you were pretty smoked right then. Um, <laughs> but tell me if I'm wrong. When I found the results, it was a six hour and 11 minute marathon, which came out to just over 14 minute miles for the 2019, your first backwards marathon. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. I, I don't remember specifically, but that does sound about right. Um, and that included uh, stopping several times for a massage <laughs> right. on my legs. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and, and a fair amount of walking the last uh, few miles. Uh, so, uh, so that's, that, that actually, um, th that actually is not a bad time because I would not try to do that again when I'm running the 100 miles. And the reason being is I'm not in a race. I actually, the reason I ran faster, especially in the first half of the um, backwards marathon that I did a year and a half ago is because I had to be across um, the, the mid point by a certain time and I had to be across the finish line by a certain time. You didn't want to get timed out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Out. So I was so, <laughs> that was, that was a little bit more uh, painful to run that, that pace for that long. I will say that I had only trained two months before that. Now I've been training five or six months for this event that's coming up. So I'm a lot more comfortable running a 14 minute pace right now, but, um, uh, but I'm not gonna try to do that on this 100 miles. In fact, it's so funny because Charlie, Engel will be like like keeping me <laughs> keeping me down <laughs> holding me back the first two days and then the last two days it will probably be pulling me along so <laughs> well i think that that's the perfect transition um to talk about so let's talk about the specifics mm -hmm. of the 100 miles in 100 hours um uh, because okay. uh you know 
we've done a hundred mile events. Um, it, you go through these periods of, of pain and having to do these things. Uh, you know, you kind of get tight, you work through it. I almost think that even just running forward, running four marathons in four days are the equivalent of that just because yeah. there's, there's that rest or break periods and, and your body can do, you know, all, tries to start recovery that can be difficult enough. So how are you approaching it from kind of a logistics or a planning standpoint to be able to do this in the hundred hour allotted time frame? Kind of what's your strategy? Uh, actually, um, I, I, I don't know that I have a strategy other than, uh, other than just this, uh, powerful passion to get out there and make it happen. I, I really, my strategy, I, I think would just be from paying attention to all of the, um, training that I've been doing the last few months, especially and, uh, nutrition. It, it's just, you know, running backwards is the same as running forward in terms of nutrition. You've got to eat and drink. You've got to hydrate. I noticed like, for example, the uh, Thanksgiving weekend, I ran 60 miles backwards and I ran 25 miles, then 10 miles, and then uh, 25 miles again. And I noticed that the last 25 miles I ran was so much stronger than the, the first 25 and then the 10 the next day. And when I finished, I swear to God, I felt like I could keep going all night. I think one of the reasons I, I don't, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure one of the reasons is that I drank a lot more water. It was even cooler that day, but I drank tons of water and uh, well, not just water, but with electrolytes. And I, I think nutrition and hydration uh, at, at times can be everything. So, yeah, so I guess the, my question is, is the plan to go until you can't go anymore and then try to rest? Or is it so many miles per day over the four days? Kind of. Oh, that, that I'm kind so of, sorry. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, logistically, how are you planning to execute? The plan is to run 25 miles per day for four consecutive days. Okay. And in the process of, training and feeling really good about uh how i feel after all of this running it, it has crossed my mind several times to condense those four days into uh one consecutive hundred miles uh, around the clock until i reach the hundred miles uh for a guinness book of world record and but but then i had to pull myself back and realize and I'm not out there to, to try to break a world record because if I do that and I don't finish the hundred miles, then that would be really embarrassing. My, my biggest goal of course is to help the kids at the community boys and girls club and to create this magical environment. So, um, so that's why I decided to, to, to say that I would do the hundred miles in a hundred hours, which is basically four days. And, and that way I'll, I'll be able to rest at night and, um, eat a big plate of pasta every night, <laughs> get refueled. So for those just, um, to kind of back up just one second, um, for those listening and, and catching up to what's going on here, what day are you actually going to start this? And do you even know what time you're starting? Uh, I will probably be starting around eight o'clock every day. Um, I may start the first day a little later, just getting set up and so forth. And then the, the last day I may start a little earlier because depending on how I feel, uh, so that I can finish before dark. But basically I, I, I think I'm giving myself eight hours, which is plenty. I, I ran the marathon in just over six hours backwards a year and a half ago, but, um, but I'll be going at a, at a little bit slower pace, probably around a 16 minute uh, pace. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, is I try to do that a lot of times when I'm training, thinking, okay, when I actually do the 100 miles, I'm gonna need to 
stick with that 16 minute pace so I don't wear myself out. And then people, people come by and they're honking their horns and they're waving and, and uh, hooting and hollering and <laughs> go Tracy, go. And that gets me so excited. I start running way too fast backwards. <laughs> Well, that's that same passion that we were talking about before. I, I would imagine that's going to, you know, that's bubbling over. But is it December 20th? Is that when all this kicks off? Uh, that's the final day. That's the it, final it, day. It'll actually kick off. Sorry, uh, Jeff, I think you asked me that question. It actually kicks off on uh, Thursday, December the 17th. Okay. And it'll, so I'll basically run roughly from 8 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And so, will, is there a specific course or will you, I mean, are you going to have aid out there or is this, is this the Tracy and Charlie show going to kind of be you know, <laughs> going where you go? Uh, no, actually that would be, that would be fun, but it's going to, um, well, it's definitely going to be fun with Charlie. We'll, we, we'll, it'll be a show one way or the other. I'm sure we'll be uh, cutting up and having fun and Charlie's got such a great sense of humor. But we will be doing a two and a half mile track around what's called the loop at Wrightsville Beach. It's a triangular um, uh, loop around the midsection of, uh, it's a sidewalk most of the way. And I do run uh, on the sidewalk and on the, um, in the bike lane. Um, so if cars get too close, I jump up on the sidewalk and, um, uh, that's another story I want to get to <laughs> a little later, but the, but basically it's November the seventeenth through the twentieth, December. 20, December. Did I yeah. say November? Yeah. That's oh, right. sorry. <laughs> December. Um, from eight a.m. to four p.m. On a two and a quarter mile loop. Two and a half. Sorry. Yes. Two and a half mile loop. Well, let's talk mindset here for a moment, right? Um, and, and so I actually ran a marathon on that loop uh, earlier this year. We did 10 laps and had a little cut in, so it was 2.62 miles. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually personally like a smaller loop like that just from being able to process, you know, count them off. But four days, <laughs> miles, that's a lot. So I know you said you'll have Charlie, right? So, I mean, you, yeah. you, know, you, you can only lean on him so much, though. Uh, being an overly positive guy, I'm sure with the stuff you've done, you've been in the quote unquote, you know, pain cave, right? You've probably been to spots oh, yeah. to, to where, yeah. how do you plan to manage that? Do you have strategies that you use when you, cause clearly you're going to end up in some low spots over those four days. What's your plan there? Wow. That, that's such a good question. And the next time you ask me that question, I'm going to have the perfect answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for right now, I'll just say, uh, honestly, I don't have a strategy other than, other than I'll burn my bridges and there's no, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like you just, you just don't stop. You just get out there. And I mean, I've, I've, I've had some, uh, training days where, uh, I, I just wasn't feeling it. And, uh, and, and, most of that would be maybe because of nutrition or not enough sleep. And, and I just tell myself, I'm going to run 25 miles backwards today. And I start and I don't stop till I finish. Well, actually I do stop and take little breaks, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go home that day until I finish the 25 miles each, each day. Yeah, I mean, you, you said you didn't have a strategy, but um, the, the strategy is to burn your bridges. And so um, you can pretend you don't have one, right? <laughs> but that's a really good strategy on something like this, is that you're, you're going to set out to do this, and there's no turning back, and there's no way to get out of it. You're just going to burn the bridge, and you're going to move forward. Yeah. And so um, I think it's a really good strategy in something like this, because it's going to be four days of getting up and running this loop. Um, and it's a really impressive feat, to be honest with you. Uh, when, when you look at this and kind of what you're undertaking, I guess, with this, this challenge, what is your biggest concerns about being able to do the hundred miles? Do you have None. any big concerns? None. Of course None. not. And, and when Tracy <laughs> McCauley, when Tracy says it, I believe him. It's the crazy thing, right? 
I have concerns, but I always have concerns. Right. Well, <laughs> and, and so the other thing I'll, I'll say with that is like we talked about, you are an accomplished runner. You ran 200 miles backwards in November. You've done a 60 mile block. This is not to me really that much of a stretch. You know, it's like a, an accomplished ultra runner that says I'm going to do a hundred and it's going to be hard, but it's backwards. No, I mean, I get it. But <laughs> he, he did 200 miles backwards. If he would, that was over the course of a month. Yeah. And then he did 60 in a weekend. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. It, it's impressive running forwards, yeah, I guess is my point. Oh, it's very right. impressive running forward. Um, Tracy, I've got no doubts, man. Uh, I, I'm super excited for you. Um, you know, obviously, we'll be spreading the word. Tell us how people can get involved, uh, how people can track along with you. Uh, is there, tell us the website, how do people donate if they want to be part of the story. So the website is 100 Ultra for Kids. And the 100 uh, is the numerical 100, and then ultra, and then four, the number four, and then kids.com. For everybody that is listening, watching, I'll make sure that I post that website. Um, obviously, I'm trying to raise $100,000. If you feel uh, you know, the pull to give to be part of that, you can go find the information there. If you're in the local area, December 17th through 20th, you can be down at uh, the Redsville Beach Loop and cheer them on. Uh, I'm sure that I'll be making an appearance. At least once. At least <laughs> once. Um, and for everybody that's not in the local area, here's our challenge to you. We'd love to see everybody kind of get involved. So our challenge mm -hmm. is after watching this, go out, film yourself. It could be 20 seconds. Try running backwards. Post a story. <laughs> put it on a post. Tag the ultra running guys. Uh, we'll make sure I'll, I'll also put it in the information um, to get the Instagram for the project itself. But tag us. We want Tracy to know that you guys are paying attention. Uh, I think that, that would just be such an incredible that show. Would be support. awesome. Mm -hmm. It'd be really cool. So do it. Don't be scared. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, no, it's not that hard. I'm 61 years old. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. Tracy, it's hard. <laughs> we just went out and tried to do it ourselves before this. I was like, I can't run this way. This is good. It's, it's like good. anything. It takes practice. But yeah. <laughs> so with that, um, Tracy, we, we really want to just say thank you uh, for being here with us tonight. Thank you to all the Ultra Running Guys community for tuning in and for your support as always. Uh, if you're on YouTube podcast, give us a follow if you like what we're doing because we'd love to have you along for our next one. So Tracy, thank you again. Thank you guys. I'm so honored to, to be here with you uh, this evening and I will definitely be honored to see your smiling faces uh, out there running that 100 miles backwards. And Perfect. Jeff, I will definitely... Uh, teach you how to do it properly oh, God. oh yeah, no. yeah yeah i'm on a, we'll get, we gotta no. get that on camera now only if you let charlie engel be my pacer for the <laughs> full um tenth, tenth of a mile <laughs> you can do it no that's you cool though it. really really cool um we definitely are gonna come out and see you all right well thank you again and Peace. cut Woo. thanks tracy oh man this was good it was really good Are we ready to move on to the backwards running? I am, but I want to talk about Charlie Angle. I mean, I'm, I'm just distracted, so you can do what you want to talk about. <laughs> right, right. Now let me see if I get my prop set up here with uh, <laughs> Charlie Angle. 50K last yeah. weekend. He just ran another 50K because he ran one in October, and I think that makes over a dozen now, right? Nine. Really? Nine finished. You're the second coolest. <laughs> yeah. I'd be number two. You'd be number three then. Oh, <laughs> I thought we were like. You, you tell him, Jeff. November of this year. But now, the reason we're having him on the show. Blah, 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 blah. Love you. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, now. <laughs> um, Got you now, man. Sorry. I was just getting some, um, some lip balm. And or, we're not live, are we? I, I bet there are zero ultra running podcasts that have had it backwards. We'll say one. Not that good. I'm going to give it at least one. Seriously, I'm not trying to make a joke, but I would imagine there's at least one. I do want to take that. It's a major, that's a game changer. A game changer. Because I had this little mirror. Oh, it's in the car. Uh...